Let us discuss some aspects about cancer and the COVID vaccines. Previously, we discussed issues with regards to cancer and COVID-19. And this slide will show the vaccines that have been authorized or approved as at this date. And I've done this section in the previous talks. So there is the mRNA vaccines, viral vector vaccines, and the inactivated vaccines. Using the vaccines that were available, the UK government set out a very well-defined program of vaccinating the high-risk groups and then went on to the other groups. And these were the five, nine groups to be vaccinated initially. So if I put these groups again, you will find that group four were the over 70s and the clinically extremely vulnerable group. Now, what is this group? and How does it link up with cancer? So these are the conditions that come under the umbrella of clinically extremely vulnerable. There are many conditions, and if we focus on the green area, as shown in this slide, you can see that there are several blood cancers, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, uh, stem cell transplant, etc. Those groups of patients come into this clinically extremely vulnerable group, and this is important. So the question that was asked was, are you clinically extremely vulnerable? If so, you should receive the vaccine, the COVID vaccine, early. And it was offered quite early after the vaccination process started in the UK. And by February 2021, 94% of clinically vulnerable people were reported to have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. And that was very important development because they were vaccinated quite early in the pandemic. So what is the effectiveness of the vaccines? And there are several studies which I will describe. The UK study, the US study, the Lithuanian study, and the Israel study. The so 2 study was from the UK. It looked at the safety and efficacy of the Pfizer vaccine in patients with cancer. There were 151 patients and cancer patients and 54 healthy controls. And you can see from this slide that 94% of healthy controls developed antibodies three weeks after the first dose. But you look at the patients with solid cancer, it's just 38%. Hematological cancers or blood cancers are 18%. So there was a big drop in patients with cancers with the development of antibodies following the first dose. The poor responders were people with respiratory and skin cancers and those receiving the vaccine within 15 days of chemotherapy. So a single dose of the vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, ineffective at neutralizing the important variant at that time, the alpha variant. What about them receiving the second dose? When they receive the second dose, 95% of patients with solid cancers zero converted or developed antibodies. There was an increase in IgG antibody level and it neutralized the wild type virus and the alpha variant. So the outcome of this study was the conclusion was that vulnerable people, that is including patients with cancer, should be prioritized during the vaccination program. It should be prioritized to get the second dose early at 21 days for a Pfizer vaccine rather than waiting for the 12 weeks or 10 weeks. The high priority group should include the cancer patient and close contacts of the cancer patient. And that is important message to be had. Next, we go to the US study. Again, it looked at zero conversion rates and antibody titers, the levels of antibody in patients who got one vaccine and two vaccines. They used the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. And you can see that after one vaccine, People zero converted, but the titers were only 32. It was very low titers, but with complete vaccination, a higher number of people developed antibodies with at a higher titer. Those with blood cancers, receiving cytotoxic chemotherapy, or monoclonal antibodies did worse than others, did not do as well. And similar results were obtained from the two vaccines, the Pfizer and the Moderna. So therefore, non-response to vaccine is higher in patients with blood cancers and no patients who receive rituximab during a certain period were able to develop antibodies. And that has to be taken into clinical consideration when making decisions by the clinician. 
The study from Lithuania was a big study, 800 odd patient, again showed that there was a blunted antibody response following a full course of Pfizer vaccine. Most negatively impacted were those who were receiving certain drugs, including rituximab. Breakthrough severe SARS-CoV-2 infections occurred in fully vaccinated individuals, especially with blood cancer in a small group, and therefore strict adherence to non-pharmacological methods and household vaccination has been suggested in addition to the patient receiving two vaccines, together with the discussion of a booster vaccine for patients with cancer. So this was the Lithuanian study findings. And finally, a study from Israel again showed that cancer patients receiving active systemic therapy developed adequate antibody to the Pfizer vaccine from a zero conversion rate, but the antibody titers were significantly lower than healthy controls. And if you look at the two, the slide on your left, the figure on your left hand side, you can see that healthy controls have a higher level of antibody. And most of the dots in the graph two was towards the baseline because it was not at a higher titer, while in healthy controls, that is graph three, was at a higher level because they were having a higher level of antibodies. And this is clearly shown in this figure where patients with cancer were developing antibodies at say the titers were 1931, while those who were healthy were developing in the 7000s. And the different cancers have been shown in that slide. So I've spoken to you about cancer as a whole, four studies from the UK, from the US, Lithuania, and uh, Israel. Now, I'll just quickly run through the effects in two important blood cancers, chronic lymphocytic leukemia and multiple myeloma. So in patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, they looked at the efficacy of the Pfizer vaccine and they found that the antibody response was markedly impaired in patients with CLF. If you look at the graphs, you can see in healthy controls, there are red bars right across the figure that is on your right hand side. But whereas in the patient with CL, there's a big gap in the middle that indicating those patients did not make appropriate amounts of antibodies. So it was markedly impaired. And similarly, in the lower figures, independent predictors of, poor, of good response were those who were younger, female sex, lack of current active treatment, and if the IgG and IgM levels are higher, these are what clinicians will look and note down in their specific patients. So in summary, those who had completed treatment and were in remission, who had already completed, it, the response was about 80%. Those who were before their treatment for the leukemia, it was about 55%. But those on active treatment, the response was very much more reduced at 16% and that has to be taken into action. Treatment with certain drugs that we use, including tyrosine kinase inhibitor, rituximab, impaired antibody levels a lot. So what can be done with this? These are the responses, low responses. Can we go for booster vaccinations? Can we go for monitor the antibody levels and then vaccinate the correct position? We have to remember at the moment, we don't have good immune correlator protection when it comes to SARS-CoV-2 infection, but that will come in shortly. So give the vaccination at an earlier time period rather than waiting for 10 to 12 weeks and the option of giving a booster and non-pharmacological methods. When it comes to multiple myeloma, a similar picture was found. The antibody development after vaccination was 56%, as opposed to hospital staff, it was 99%. This was similar with the Pfizer and the AstraZeneca vaccine. Lower positive rates were found if the multiple myeloma was active, if the patients were on, had immunoparesis or immunosuppression due to their disease, and patients on any treatment. So these factors have to be taken into consideration when vaccinating patients with cancer, especially blood cancers, and appropriately target the time period and the vaccines to be used. So in summary, what I have done was I've told you about cancer and the COVID vaccines. I've illustrated with some studies, findings that have come out with regards to this aspect in different parts of the world. 
I told you some findings in chronic lymphocytic leukemia and multiple myeloma. So in summary, COVID-19, cancer is a significant issue. It's especially so in blood cancers as opposed to solid cancers, but it's also important in solid cancers when compared to healthy control. Vaccination is important in trying to prevent the people with cancer getting COVID. It should be given a shorter gap. Booster doses may be needed to get the antibody levels to appropriate levels because the response is lower than a patient who is a healthy, normal control. Non-pharmacological methods would may have to be continued despite vaccination because the two may have to go hand in hand for longer than a person with a normal immune system. Thanks a lot.